After we define an array, we can reassign a value to an element of the array by putting the indexed element on the left-hand side of an assignment, as we do on this line, where we are reassigning the first element of the array from the symbol 1 to the integer 1. Even though this array is only defined with three elements, we can assign a value past the end of the array. In this example in which we assigned the value 10 to the 11th element of the array, the array has automatically resized itself and inserted nil values between the previous end of the array and the new endpoint. So we saw that an array can extend itself past its end point, but if we try to extend it past its start point, we'll get an error. We can also insert an array into a section of an array on the left-hand side of the assignment. In this case, we have an array 1, 2, 3, and we're inserting it into a subarray starting at index 1 and consisting of a single element. So we see that the elements 1, 2, 3 from the new array have taken the place of the string 5 from the original array. If we wanted to replace both of the last two elements of the original array with the contents of the new array, we can change the length of the subarray using the second argument. And now we see that the string 5 and the number 6 have disappeared and been replaced by the new array consisting of 1, 2, 3. And we can achieve the same effect using a range, and by assigning an empty array on the right-hand side to the same subarray, we can delete these elements. So now the array consists only of the symbol 4. We can concatenate two arrays using the plus operator, and here we see the concatenated output. In this example, I try to concatenate the symbol 4 with an array on the left-hand side of the plus operator, and I get an error. The concatenation will only work if we have an array on the right-hand side of the plus operator. I can also use the minus operator with arrays. In this example, I have repeating elements 1, 2, 3, which appear three times in the array on the left-hand side. And on the right-hand side, I have an array consisting of a single element 3. By subtracting this array from the array on the left, I will remove any elements that exist in this array from this one. And here we see that all of the 3s have been removed. I can also use the append operator to add elements to the end of an array. In this case, I'm adding the number 4 as the last element of the array. And we can use the ampersand operator to find the intersection of two arrays. In this case, the array on the left has the elements 4 and 5, and the array on the right also contains these elements. And by using the ampersand operator, we can identify these elements as the intersection between these two arrays. We can also use the pipe operator to get the union of the two arrays. The union will exclude any duplicates, so even though the elements 4 and 5 appear in the array on the left and right hand side of the operator, they will only appear once in the output. And the order of the elements in the resulting array will be different depending on which array appears on the left or right of the pipe operator. So here I've switched the original arrays around, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 appears on the right, and 4 through 8 appears on the left. And if we look at the output, we see that 4 through 8 appears first in the output, followed by 1, 2, 3, with any duplicates removed. Another way to remove duplicates from an array is to use the unique method, spelt U-N-I-Q. In this example, I have an array containing 1, 2, 3, repeated twice, and when I print out the array, I'm calling the unique method to extract the duplicates, and following that, I'm printing out the array itself to indicate what effect the unique method has had on the original array. And here we see that the unique method causes 1, 2, 3 to be displayed once, but the original array has not been affected, and when we print it out, we see all six elements. If we add an exclamation point to the unique method, however, we're using the destructive version of the unique method, and now, when we run the program, we see that the original array has been permanently altered, and any duplicates have been permanently removed from it.